Well, welcome to our classic car now. Today is a very exciting day here at OCCHQ because today I find out if the 1956 Standard 8 will actually run. Obviously I've done a fair bit of prep work to get it to a point where it appears that it should run but until you take it out on the road you never quite know exactly just how well these things are going to go. So it's not been on the road, I've not driven it anywhere other than backwards and forwards here so it's going to be quite an interesting little journey just to see how we get on and how many of those 28 brake horsepower in 1956 are still with us in 2022. So let's fire up the Standard and see how we get on. Let's go. into the commodious interior. Right, so, ignition on. I did run it earlier on, so we shouldn't need any choke. There we go. some quiet roads so let's just have a look to see how the old girl does. First impressions are fairly encouraging I think. Still a little bit tappy from the top of the engine so I think we need to revisit the, uh, the tapping settings but there's no ominous knocks or bangs or anything like that. No obvious sort of knocks from the bottom end big end, main bearing seem okay. Um, it's just a little bit tap here at the top. Um, steering doesn't feel bad. It's no ball of fire with 28 brake horsepower but it's adequate and it's got a little bit more go than the Anglia has even though the Anglia is a slightly larger engine, about 130 cc more which uh, at this end of the engine scale uh, every cc counts really. The 948 standard 8 10 rather has 30, 32 brake horsepower I think and this is 28 so there's about 5 or 6 brake horsepower difference between the two. Um, like I say with a sub 1 litre engine every cc and every brake horsepower is uh, quite important really but it's never going to be a racing car it's just for pottering around this one and that's what it's for. do a few miles around the lanes just let everything settle in a bit let the brakes settle in check the clutch see how the see if there's any noises from the back axle once it warms up same with the engine see if it uses any oil or puts any oil out when they accelerate so these are all the kinds of things that we look out for on the first test drive of a, a very unknown quantity exactly what your standard 8 is. Anyway. Just keep going and see how far we get and hopefully we won't have too many issues. I've got plenty of tools with me, I've got spare water, I haven't got any oil but I know the oil's alright, I changed oil recently. So we should be good on that school. I might try that Ferodo the old tapway meter, the brake testing meter. I might give that a whirl sometime. Um, First time I've had a standard eight on the road. And the standard eight 
Standard 8 first came out in I think 1952, that's when they were launched. And, uh, compared to the Anglia, it's like night and day really. The Anglia became the top one of three and was sold alongside at the same time as the Standard 8 and the 10. But the two of them couldn't be more different really. This was a clean sheet of paper in the early 1950s. Um, whereas the Anglia, the part one of three, it was very much a pre-war car that just happened to be built in the 1950s. The Anglia the pops, they had three speed gear pops, side valve engine, vacuum wipers, this has got electric wipers, this has got a four speed gear box, you know, so uh, this was a whole lot more advanced than the little Fords. So the Fords edge the standard on character, but back in the day, in the early 1950s, this would have been a whole lot fresher design, a lot newer car to drive around in. And aimed at similar buyers. I imagine the Anglias and the Pops were a little bit cheaper than this. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head what the list price of the Standard 8 was. But I wouldn't have thought they'd be too far apart because if this was too expensive they wouldn't have sold any. So uh, they must have been comparable. A few more miles done. Like I say, I put a spot of fuel in just to keep things topped up. Don't want to run it too low. So what have I learnt on today's little first run out in the standard eight? Well, let's start from the back. The diff seems good. It's not very. It's not particularly noisy. No worrying clunks or whines or groans, etc. Same for the gearbox. That seems pretty good. The gear selection is a little bit vague. Well, that's probably just down to technique more than anything else. Clutch works fine. Biting point seems good. Engine is good essentially. It's a little bit noisy at the top, so I think the tappets need revisiting. It may be that there's a bit of wear in the rocker shaft and it's not adjustable out, so uh, I need to keep an eye on that. I don't think it's a timing chain because the, the tappeting sounds like it's from the top of the engine, um, so tappets, rather than the timing chain which is at the front of the engine, of course, so uh, that seems okay. So I'm not too worried there. There's no signs of it boiling up, the brakes work. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much not far off. I'm just going to revisit the tappets when we get back and I get a minute free just to have a look at those again and see if we can just improve things a little bit there but essentially it seems to be working pretty well I'm pretty pleased so I thought I'll just pull over here have a sit down because there's a little bench here which is quite convenient we can have a look over Shropshire Way so there's a bit of information here about some of the hills that are in the distance it's just a lovely spot this is, looking down over Shropshire, way down into the distance there. If you've checked out some of the previous videos, you'll have seen the Anglia parked in this exact same spot. Because it's a lovely place just to park up for a minute and admire the scenery. Which today is also blessed by the presence of a lovely little 1950s Standard 8. Let me know in the comments what you think of these little cars, if you've ever driven one of these. If you've got any parts for one of these tucked away in your garage that you no longer need, please drop me a line. Uh, maybe a new rocker assembly would be quite nice. But yeah, that's the 1956 Standard 8, so I think I'll just sit here, lap up the views for a little bit longer. And then we'll saunter back home again. It's a few miles done on today's test, which is quite good. Uh, like I say, before, before I set off, you never quite know what you're going to be faced with once you take a car for a run, having not tested it before, buying it, and, uh, you know, there's no test drive or anything like that, because it wasn't quite running right, so uh, there's no chance. It's a little bit, you're buying blind, especially when you're buying off the internet, and you never quite know how truthful or otherwise the seller is. The guy I bought this from seemed pretty much on the level, I think. It was as described pretty much as a few extra bubbly bits, which I wasn't aware of, but 
you know there's always something but essentially it seems pretty good just need to quieten off the top end of the engine a little bit and then we'll be i'll be really happy but as I, you know i can't be too upset with how things are anyway thank you very much for uh, watching this short video there'll be more videos about the standard the anglia the dodges and so on very very soon so uh, bye for now One other thing I've noticed is that these rear seats, which fold forward to access the boot area, they're rather fond of bobbing forwards whenever you brake. So I think the trick is always to leave something on the back seat that just props them in place, like a box or something like that, because it can be a bit annoying with these sort of things just popping forward.